Okay, students, so here we're going to set up and migrate for our twin stick shooter project. So I'm starting a new game uh, and I'm choosing blank as my setup. The twin stick shooter used to be a, um, like a default framework that Unreal had in previous versions, but it either hasn't yet been ported to Unreal 5 or they are no longer going to port it to Unreal 5, but I have updated it from older version, and you have access to it uh, in your asset folder. So I'm going to call ahead and call this a Holden Twin Stick, um, and you should have your name in the project name. And I am going to put on the starter content because for my examples, I'm going to be using just basic materials and some basic um, particle effects that come with Unreal. You may want to leave it blank and bring in your own materials or your own packs, depending on whatever sort of theme you've pitched for your version of the twin stick shooter. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and create it. Now, at the same time, uh, I have also opened in another version of Unreal the twin stick shooter project that will be in your assets folder. And you can see it looks like this. It has the same look as those other uh, default starter uh, projects for Unreal. You can see it says Twin Stick. We got our little uh, spaceship here. And um, I am going to migrate it to our project. So I'm going to open my content drawer. And I'm going to select all three of our folders here, the geometry folder, the twin stick folder, and the twin stick blueprint folder. And I'm going to right click and choose migrate. And that's all the stuff. And then I'm going to migrate it to where my project is, which for most of you should be in documents, unreal projects. Uh, and then I called this Holden twin stick and I want to finish in the content folder and click select. And when it copies, we can go ahead and close this copy of the twin stick shooter because we have our own and that way it won't mess it up for any other students. Okay, so here we are in the Holden twin stick and you can see because we made this as a blank project, it defaults to this minimal default uh, level. But if we look, we can see here we have our twin stick starter content and twin stick blueprint stuff uh, in the level. So we have a little bit of work to do in order to set this up so that it works uh, that you wouldn't have had to do if you copied it exactly, but we're going to have to do some project setup. So the first thing I want to do is go to Edit Project Settings. And in here, I'm interested in Maps and Modes on the left side. And over here, we can see that our default game mode is Game Mode Base. And we want our default game mode to be twin stick game mode, because that is the game mode that comes with the twin stick shooter. It's already set up for us. And then in our selected game mode, it should, when we switch to twin stick game mode, come with the correct pawn and player controller, player state, and spectator. So that's all good for us. While we're here, I'm going to switch my editor startup to twin stick example map and my default twin stick example map. I imagine once you start to do your level design, you will make your own new map for it, but this works for our purposes. So now that we have our project settings fixed away, let's go ahead and open the content drawer. I'm going to go to Twin Stick, Twin Stick BP, Maps, Twin Stick Example Map, and open up that example map for us. And let's look at what we have here. We have just a big empty open room to start. We have our character here, which is a UFO. And we have a couple of, it looks like physics boxes and then some barriers. And if we look in our twin stick blueprints, we can see some of our default blueprints that are set up. We have the twin stick pawn and the twin stick projectile. I'm gonna open this guy up so we can talk a little bit about what is already set up for you. So when opening our 
pawn here, we can see the way he's programmed. And it looks a little scary at the beginning, but it's actually quite simple. It just has a bunch of checks going on in it. You will notice we have some issues with the compiler. It uh, doesn't have our input access references, and that's because we will again have to make those in our project settings. But you can see here on tick, it is checking a couple things. First, it is coming over here, and it is checking to see if we are uh, moving forward or moving right on our axes, turning those into motion, setting the rotation of our ship, uh, or the offset of our ship, and then checking with collision with the different actors in the level so that it has a smooth movement and doesn't get caught on walls and such. Uh, it also down here has a uh, firing shot that is set as a, diff, uh, a different uh, key. So this is the type of twin stick shooter where uh, you control it using your W, A, S, and D keys, and then you shoot using your arrow keys. So you can shoot in a different direction that you are moving. Um, unlike some of the examples we played in class, things like Flying Tigers, this is more of a Geometry Wars uh, type default character where you can shoot in a different direction. In addition, it does come with the benefit that we can use uh, one of the plug and play USB controllers that I will be bringing into class. So you can use the left stick to move and the right stick to shoot. So let's go to our inputs and fix this bit so it works. So I'm going to drag and I'm going to go to edit project settings again. And this time I want to on the left here, choose input. So what we are missing here is our axis mappings. So we actually need four axis mappings because those are the only buttons we're going to use to play this game are the two thumbsticks or the directions when we're using the keyboard. So I'm going to add an axis mapping. So I hit this little plus sign, and then I have this new axis mapping here. And I'm going to hit it uh, four times total because the top axis mapping is called Move Forward. Notice a capital F, capital M. The second one is called Move Right. The third one is called Fire Right. And the final one is called Fire forward. Now, we have to map which keys affect these, um, these inputs. So by default here, you have one for each one. We're actually going to make it three. So I'm going to hit the little plus sign twice next to each one. So at the top here, if we're moving forward with W, A, S, and D, I want to have W, so I'm looking for keyboard W here, and that is my forward movement, and it has a scale of one. And then because moving backwards is exactly the same as moving forwards, but just in a different direction, we can make S our backwards keyboard here. So keyboard S uh, be here, and all we need to do is change the scale. So the scale is negative one. Finally, um, we are going to use a gamepad input, and we are looking here for gamepad left thumbstick Y axis, right? So think about it. That's Y axis, that's up and down with your left thumb, and that is your forward and back. What's interesting is if you have the gamepad actually plugged in, you can just click to input here and then uh, press the button if you click on here. So you get that bright yellow. You can flick the gamepad, as I just did with the one to my side, and it says gamepad left thumbstick X axis, which is what we're looking for for our move right. So again, here we are for move right. Our positive is going to be uh, keyboard D. So I can scroll down here and get D. And then our negative would be A for the ASD. So keyboard A, and I'm going to put in a negative. Moving down to fire right, we are looking for gamepad right thumbstick X, which I can do just by flicking to the right if I click this little uh, key in yellow. So there it is, keypad right thumbstick. 
It's quite easy if we click these here. I want uh, the fire right to be the right key and the left key, but with a negative. And finally, fire forward, I can press up. Here I can press down, put a negative in here. And lastly, we are looking for gamepad, right thumbstick, Y axis, axis, excuse me. When all these bindings are here, uh, you will be able to control your little spaceship. In addition, uh, I usually do a save all here to make sure it saves my preferences. Let's look uh, at that twin stick pawn blueprint. We can now compile it and get no errors. And if we go ahead and hit play, you should be able to fly around, including diagonally, from the code using your WASD and shoot in multiple directions. And if I switch here to using my gamepad, I can very smoothly gamepad fly around and gamepad shoot. Uh, in our next video, we're going to look at adding in a HUD very quickly so that we can do a bunch of things that deal with that from the get-go instead of trying to add it in uh, you know, halfway through.